Okay, hi guys. Having a little bit of low energy day. Didn't get a lot done. Um, but uh, just happened to find um, not so much an article, so much as a um, a YouTube, <laughs> a Reddit comment thread about. Um, it's on Ask Reddit. It's um, who, what beloved person in history should be hated. And apparently Steve Jobs is not a good dude. So we're going to talk about that today. I haven't really read this completely. I read it a little bit enough to know that there is abusive content here and fair warning. But uh, beyond that, I haven't read a whole lot about it. So we're just going to go through it together. It's a fairly long thing. So we'll see what we've got. So um, apparently these are just highlights for when Steve... Jobs abused his daughter, Lisa Jobs, after he readopted her. So I guess he must have left her at some point with a, a with the the mom, biological mother, uh, and then readopted her. So let's see here. They made Lisa sleep on the first floor next to the kitchen, while the rest of the family slept on the top floor. Initially, she was the only child, and all the rooms upstairs were empty, but they still made her sleep on the floor. One by one, the other kids were born from Steve and Lawrence Powell and were given rooms on the second floor. The first floor had broken heating and she was constantly cold. That's, that's pretty bad physical abuse. While everyone upstairs enjoyed heating. It's California, but keep in mind that she's a petite girl who uh, as an adult reached the height of 5.2. It's the Bay Area where the winter temperature can reach in the 40s. Uh, she would constantly beg Steve Jobs to fix the heating and he refused. The guy was a billionaire, so fuck was his problem. Every time she would start excelling in extracurricular activities, her dad would complain that she was not spending enough time with her family. He said stuff like, you know, Lisa, I feel that you really don't want to be a part of this family. When Lisa quit her activities to be with her family more, him and his wife, Lauren, would take her, uh, would just give um, Lisa Reed Jobs, their son and only baby at the time, to babysit and then they would go to some party or event so that's um you know we, we just discussed physical abuse with the, the, the heating thing you, you gotta let people sleep and that and have warmth that's that's basic crap uh that's physical abuse but this with um cutting her out from her extracurricular activities that's isolation and manipulation and treating her as an object that they own uh they finally involve invite lisa to come to a wedding she's excited about it and planned for weeks about enjoying an event with her dad and stepmom. She got a dress and everything at the hotel room. Uh, after she finished, she gets dressed and putting on her makeup. They hand her the baby and leave her behind to babysit in the hotel room while they enjoy the wedding. That is just gross manipulation. Uh, completely unacceptable. Not something that should be tolerated. Um, absolutely abusive, manipulative, and it's mostly emotionally, emotionally manipulative. And abusive. Uh, she wanted an, a next computer, N E, capital N, small E, big X, big T, N E X T computer, like how Steve and Lauren each had one. Uh, Steve finally got her one, but uh, when she tried it, it didn't work. He took it away and never replaced it. Uh, this one may seem minor, but it's actually a part of Steve's habit of dangling hope in front of her, taking it away, like with a wedding. Um, that's this this commenter's interpretation, not that not um, Lisa's Lisa Jobs, but it, that does what it, that same, seems like it, giving her hopes, future faking. Uh, when she was at her mom's house, uh, which was Steve's, he owned the house. Steve hired a child molester to be the gardener. I don't think he was ever convicted, so her mom couldn't remove him. But she was, but the the gardener was accused by his own children. Her mom would constantly scream and cry for Steve to remove him, and Steve Jobs refused. That is that is like a threat. That is definitely just like a physical threat that he's putting on the property. Um, by the way, if you're wondering where the mom is in all this and why Steve left Lisa, why Steve let Lisa live with her if he hated her so much, um, Lisa's mom was also emotionally unstable. Lisa was often the victim of her temper tantrums, but she felt that Lisa took away because she felt that Lisa took away her life. The mother felt that way. Lisa confided, confided this to her school counselor who would, tell, who would then tell Steve 
um, and Steve didn't care. Finally, the school counselor threatened to call social services if Steve didn't do anything, which would be a PR nightmare, so he begrudgingly took her in. Begrudgingly took her in. Sorry, my voice is a little today. Um, from reading other books on Steve, if he's forced to do something, he does it very passive-aggressively. From Lisa's book, it seems he his abuse towards Lisa was like, okay, you forced me to take in Lisa, but you can't force me to give into your ultimate demand of her being treated properly. Uh, again, this is the poster's interpretation, not Lisa's. Steve told Lisa he would take her in, but only if she had cut all contact with her mom for six months to prove to him that she really wants to be a part of his family. A line Steve repeatedly used on Lisa to manipulate her into doing things she didn't want to do and quitting things she didn't like, that she did like doing, like cutting school for family vacation two weeks before finals. Even though Lisa had a fucked up relationship with her mom, she still loved her. And Steve telling her that he, that Lisa needs to cut ties with her mom that that's isolation he's isolating her from her support even if the mom does have issues cutting off contact with her mom for six months fucked the mom up emotionally even more though she initially welcomed the change saying that she needs a break from her uh the poster says it's their interpretation that she didn't want to feel guilt for her decision but the cutoff did affect the mom's already fragile psyche and they met for dinner after six months. Her mom, out of nowhere, threw a tantrum about how Lisa abandoned her and that all she wants to do is hang out with rich people. I believe Lisa was only nine years old when she had to endure this. So that's, that's abuse coming from both ends. I feel really bad for Lisa. She's getting tugged in between these two parents who really just don't have any business raising a child if they're going to do it this way. You know, Steve had enough money. He could have got her all the resources in the world. So this is horse shit. Lisa's chores included dishes, but they refused to fix the dishwasher for years. What the hell? One day she had the initiative to fix it on her own while her parents were away. She got a repairman to find, to find the problem. It turned out to be only a $40 fix. She was really proud of herself. She told Steve, hoping to finally impress him. When she told him, he frowned. The next day he replaced the dishwasher with a new one. He wants to remove all artifacts of Lisa's accomplishments. And that's that person's interpretation. Um, not Lisa's, but that seems pretty seems pretty accurate. She did something and tried to impress her father, try to show that she cares and show initiative, and he just basically ignores it and just removes all evidence of it. Just a real shitbag move. Sorry for cursing a lot today. Um, these videos aren't for children, but I don't like to curse too much. Lisa really got into debate club. As her first big regional tournament, she got first place, tied for first place, actually. The first one to the podium would get the trophy. Lisa frantically rushed there because she wanted to show Steve the trophy to impress her. At the time, Lisa thought if she impressed Steve enough, he would start to appreciate her. That's classic of the abused. When she showed him the trophy, he made her quit. His excuse that debate club was not useful in the real world. This poster says their interpretation is that he wanted to remove anything that would give her a semblance of self-esteem. And then and they say that's their interpretation, not Lisa's. That's, yeah, that seems pretty accurate that he's just trying to not let her have anything big and that proves that she's competent or good at things because it allows him to continue to tear her down, debase her and treat her as if she's nothing. Whenever Steve would see a homeless person, he joked, that's who Lisa is going to marry. Whenever he saw a strip club, he joked, that's where Lisa is going to work. Strip club joke started when she was nine years old. I can't tell you how disgusting that is. It's, it's pretty horrible. Uh, I've never had to endure specifically that, especially from my own father, but that is just, that is abuse. It's obvious abuse. Lisa's therapist invited Steve and his second wife, Lauren Powell, to a meeting with Lisa to get them to spend family time, to, to spend quality family time with Lisa. Lauren's response was, sorry, Lisa, but we're just cold people. After they left, the therapist told Lisa something like, that's pretty much what I expected. What monsters, what actual pieces of shit. You got all that money in the world, you can't give your daughter at least a good life. I don't. Lisa developed an eating disorder when Steve told her she was fat. I don't think I need to explain how that's abusive. But I will. You can't, you can't be saying shit like that to your daughter or even your partner that's just 
abusive crap you can't you shouldn't be saying it's not it's not appropriate there are so many better ways you can bring that up with someone about their weight it's completely inappropriate um, when Lisa was in college Steve Jobs cut off her tuition um, a family friend secretly paid off the tuition really Steve Jobs you're a billionaire you can't pay for your daughter's education Steve uh, uh, when he only had a few weeks to live actually did apologize to Lisa Lisa told Lauren she downplayed this telling Lisa I don't believe in deathbed revelations so her stepmom is just as abusive Lisa's got this one thing she can hold on to her dying dad and the stepmom's like nah fuck you he doesn't mean it <laughs> what a piece of shit an actual piece of shit uh, so apparently this isn't even a full list but uh, but writing this has put part of them in a really bad move, so they're going to stop now. Um, the book probably doesn't even get to the worst of it. Her mom said she didn't go into how bad it really was, if you can believe that. Yeah, Steve Jobs is an abuser. Um, since people are asking if Lisa was sexually abused, well, uh, so they added it and they added some more stuff. Um, so basically at this point we can conclude, if you want to stop watching now, Steve Jobs is an abuser, obviously. Or was an abuser, you know, probably burning in hell now, uh, if that's what he believes in. <laughs> but let's, you know, let's let's, let's see what the more they said. So if, if she was sexually abused, let's see which parts are relevant. In one part of the books, uh, one in one part of the book, when Lisa was still a child, Steve and Lauren were making out, and Steve reached under her skirt as she spread her legs, and and another hand on her breast. She started moaning loudly. Lisa stood up to go away and. Steve told her to stay and that they're having a family moment. So she sat back down, facing away, but listening to them moan. What the fuck? That is gross sexual abuse. That is that is like grooming. A family moment? Especially when he was saying all that stuff about wanting to spend family time together. Seems like he was setting his daughter up for rape. Steve Jobs encouraged Lisa to masturbate in the bathtub and have safe sex when she was around 13 or 14. Um, not in Lisa's book, but in um, Steve Jobs' mother's book, A Bite from the Apple by Chrisanne Brennan. The one where Chrisanne, and that one time when Chrisanne came to pick up Lisa from Steve Jobs' house, they found Steve making sexually inappropriate jokes, and after that, she had to make sure that there was another adult present with them. I think it was in the period where Steve accepted Lisa back into his life, but before Chris Ann's mental breakdown, where Lisa had to move in with Steve. <sighs> yeah, I've read that when a man makes sexually inappropriate comments about his daughter, it's... It's a few reasons. He views it as a reflection of himself because she's from him. He views her as a, an object that he can do whatever he want with. And when it does involve sexual molestation or assault or rape, apparently that's more common from abusers than not. So if you're in a situation where you have an abuser and you have kids, um, it can get worse. Uh, so again, this is not a complete list from the book, and the book doesn't even get into the worst of it, according to Chris Ann Brennan. Uh, apparently, they give a link here, a YouTube link, after saying um, something about an Audible book. Supposedly, Lauren tried to get Barnes & Noble, Audible, Goodreads, and any major book platform uh, to not feature that the book mentioned. Um, that's Lauren Powell, the, the stepmom of Lisa. She did the same thing in 2015 to Steve Jobs' movie, first trying to prevent it from getting made. I'm not sure what came of Lauren's efforts, but I like to think that Lauren, this is what the poster said, but I like to think that Lauren actually drew attention to the Audible book. And then Audible loved it so much they taped the video review and put it on YouTube. That would be funny. Audible's pretty smart and they're good at, uh, they're good at that kind of thing. Um, and while... And they said, this is another edit. They said, well, I've got everyone's attention. Let's make some, let's, uh, some facts regarding Steve dying of cancer. 
He ignored his doctor's advice for years, thinking he could cure his own cancer with fruit because he's a raging e e egomaniac who thinks that because he's Steve Jobs, he's better than anyone. Raging egomaniac, maybe. It does seem like he's a complete narcissist and potentially a sociopath. By the time Steve agreed to a transplant, it was way too late. He'd used his money and influence to get on the wait list for a transplant. Someone who actually could have had their life saved died because Steve was rich and they were not. What a piece of shit. Not only that, the transplant wait list is based on geography, so Steve Jobs bought houses in every wait list location so he could get on all of them at once. Once again, someone who did everything right died while Steve Jobs and his raging ego did everything wrong to get the transplant because he was rich and they were not. Couldn't help his daughter out with college or anything, but he's willing to do this shit for himself. Finally, Tim Cook offered to donate his own Steve Jobs said, I couldn't do that to you, and everyone in the room laughed. Steve Jobs could have bypassed all these ethical issues and taken Tim Cook, but instead decided to just let another non-rich person die and use the donation of another rich person rather than let uh, a rich person be a donor. Uh, piece of shit. <laughs> keep saying that, but it keeps on being true. Edit three. Brennan Jobs also said Jobs sometimes walked out of the restaurants without paying the bill and mocked her cousin's awful voice. She did admit that she felt like she had a quaking electric love for her father. That's so sad. Also in the book, Lisa describes that Steve went on to a full temper tantrum on a kid. He first got annoyed with it. He first got annoyed with him for eating meat. He started yelling at him at the top of his lungs for eating too loudly. The kid was a part of their group. I believe one of the employees' kids. He wasn't just a random kid. Okay, I can see why they got really sick from writing all that crap. Like, holy bejesus. That's pretty bad. Uh, yeah, I concluded probably like f about four minutes ago or so, something like that. That uh, Or six, maybe, I don't remember. Uh, Steve Jobs is an abuser. That's obvious, pretty easily obvious. Do anything remotely physical, emotional, sexual to someone like that, that is abuse. And the fact that he did all of that and probably more terrifying. Well, that's what I learned from Lundy. Um, and why does he do that? Lundy, ba Lundy Bancroft is just, you know, he, he, the abusers that he's helped have been, some of them, very famous people. He mentioned judges and lawyers and well-to-do people. So, you know, it's really not what you do. It's an outlook issue. Anyone who is an abuser, it, it doesn't really matter their station of life. They're, they're going to be abusive. So we got to learn the signs. we got to learn the language. we got to get better. we got to get healthier. And we can't let people do that crap to us anymore. Whether they're one of the richest people in the world at the time or not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's it for me, guys. We'll see what we can do later. Talk to you later.